So in Daniel 7, there's four beasts that symbolize modern nations. The first one, a lion with eagle's wings. That's Great Britain and the United States. I'm going to go through this pretty quick now, so I think most all of you all have heard this. But a bear, Russia, modern-day nation of Russia, a four-headed leopard, Germany, and a ten-horned beast, which we know is the reborn Holy Roman Empire or the current European Union. Well, when John wrote the book of Revelation, he used these same symbols or nations to describe the end-time world government. A, a, um, in John's account, the four separate beasts or nations of Daniel 7 have federalized into a one large global governing body. And the interpretation goes like, um, let me see if I can quote it. So, and I stood upon the sand of the sea, saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads, ten horns. And on his horns, which would symbolize the European Union, were ten crowns. Upon his heads, the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, the body of the leopard, Germany. Feet as the feet of the bear, Russia. These are the nations going to be involved now. His mouth is the mouth of the lion, Great Britain. And the dragon gave him his seat, power, and great authority. The dragon, Satan. That's Revelation um, 13, 1 and 2. So... This is a 2,000-year-old prophecy of the world government that is currently being established. However, something's missing, right? The United States. The eagle's wings, symbolic of the United States all the way back in Daniel 7, are not mentioned in that combo beast of Revelation 13. And this indicates that the United States will not be included in the world government of the end time. So think about what's going on in the world right now this new world order, world government that we talked about early on, that the United States would not be part. But you said, well, Dave, the, the United States, is, you said, would be the, is, has been the principal driver. That is correct. But the Bible says that's not how it's going to end up. So this and other prophecies indicate that world dominance will have shifted from the United States to the powers of Europe. Now, I want you to think about this as I go through some of the things that are going on in Afghanistan. Now, let me repeat that statement. This and other prophecies indicate that world dominance will have shifted from the United States to the, over to the powers of Europe. So the, over time, this left us with a few questions. I mean, obviously, since we have been presently been the leader of the world government, how is this shift in power from the United States to Europe going to happen? Is the United States going to be wiped out in World War III? We, we asked that question for many years. Or would we be brought to our knees to the point and become a non-factor on the world stage? Or on the other hand, will we perhaps go into maybe isolation? But there is a scripture that helps us answer these questions. Back in Revelation 12, jump back one chapter, is the only other place that eagle's wings are mentioned in the prophecies of the Bible. And or I should say of the end time. Revelation 12, 13 says the dragon will persecute a woman. The dragon, Satan, will persecute a woman with 12 stars around her head. The woman is Israel in Revelation 12. The 12 stars symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel. That's not depicting Mary there, okay? According to Revelation 13, the dragon or Satan will use the Antichrist and his world governing system to do the persecuting here. But John tells us in the next verse, this would be Revelation 12, 14, that Israel will be protected during the Great Tribulation, which will occur during the final three and a half years immediately preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 14 says, And to the woman, who's the woman Israel, were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness, into her place, which is Israel, where she is nourished for a time, time and half a times, from the face of the serpent. Um, that's the, and so, that's the great tribulation. So a clear understanding of Revelation 12 and chapter 13 has allowed us to be absolutely sure of two things. The United States will stand with Israel and protect Israel from the world government in the end time. And the United States will not be part of the world government and therefore will not come under the reign of the Antichrist. Now that's great news, right? So let's talk about the America's exit because I think we're watching this happening. started under Trump, but it's actually continuing under Biden. 
Look at what's going on in Afghanistan and the international community, how they're looking at the Biden administration in the United States and this horrible debacle that's happened in Afghanistan. They see us with a, um, as a nation of, as a weak nation, diminishing on the world stage. This is exactly what, ha what the Bible says is going to happen. So from the signing of the United Nations charter back in 1945 until the 2016 presidential election, it was clear the United States was in full compliance with the world governing system. Some presidents really, they proceeded cautiously while others just blundered forward and they were drunk on the dreams of a fully functioning world governing system. But no matter who was in the office, at the end of their administration, we still seem to be headed in the same direction in, full, in, in compliance with the world governing body. However, knowing that the prophecies foretell America's absence, remember, America's not mentioned in the world governing beast in Revelation 13. So prophecy foretells America's absence from the world governing system and the rate at which end time prophecy is being fulfilled. We knew, Irvin Baxter and I talked about this for years, we knew that something in Washington's political atmosphere had to change and change soon. Well, it did with when President Trump came in office, okay? I mean, before he got in office, he starts talking against the establishment, against the deep state. Well, we're sitting there going, hold on a minute, that's the new world order. And he's talking against it. Well, with President Trump, the international community hated him because he wouldn't play ball with their world governing body. But they respected him because he operated from a position of putting America first and from a position of strength. You do this, we'll bomb you. I mean, he just, everybody knew where he stood. He was anti-world government and it showed. But they had to respect him because he operated from a position of strength. Now, I don't agree with 100% of everything he did, but I'm telling you that's what happened under the Trump administration. However, under the Biden administration, especially with this Afghanistan debacle, America appears weak to the international community and our allies are questioning whether they can even count on us when the chips are down. So there's some news articles, even from CNN, and I almost never look at CNN. But sometimes I'll read it just to see what the other side's saying. But CNN actually said, so Joe Biden actually has his own quote-unquote people turning on him. CNN said that at the Afghan, Afghanistan withdrawal leaves allies, our United States allies, to face harsh realities of the United States departure from the world stage. What's the Bible say? The United States is not going to be, in, be part of the world government in the end time. The CNN actually said the sudden fall of Kabul and the Taliban's near total takeover of, of Afghanistan has left many of America's long-standing partners wondering what will become of the value-based U.S.-led international order. All because of Afghanistan. If you're gonna, it's like king of the hill. Whoever shows the most strength, they're the king of the hill. Well, guess what? We're not showing strength at all. They hated Donald Trump, but they had to respect him because of the strength that he showed. But guess what they're talking about with Joe Biden and how they're looking at the United States. So while President Joe Biden's withdrawal of troops by August 31st is, they say, is inevitable, the speed at which the situation descended into chaos and the White House's lack of contrition and flexibility has left our allies totally spinning right now. Imagine being an ally of the United States and hearing that, get this everybody, according to the watchdog group, open the books, that the U.S. military is leaving behind 75,000 vehicles, 600,000 weapons, and 208 airplanes and helicopters. Just before I walked on the air today, I saw a video of the Taliban in one of our Black Hawk helicopters going down a runway because we just abandoned that stuff. I saw another video of 
just stacks of American rifles that the Taliban were loading into a big truck to disperse. Now, all of this is happening under the, the Biden administration, everybody. It sits right in their lap. So we're leaving this stuff in Afghanistan as the Taliban takes control of the country. The Heritage Foundation, they actually said that Joe Biden in the, has been a monumental disaster. The, the fall of Kabul to the Taliban following the U.S. withdrawal from the Afghanistan is a humiliation for the world's superpower. Now, folks, the international community is viewing us as weak. What does the Bible say is going to happen? That we will diminish from the leader of the world stage, powers will swing over to Europe. Biden's team, th this article um, actually said that Biden's team promised to restore America's credibility and following the supposed unpredictability of the Trump years, right? But instead, they now look like a bunch of amateurs. This is from the Heritage Foundation and that it would be up to the next president to clean up the mess the Biden administration leaves and restore U.S. leadership on the global stage. I don't know if that will ever happen again. According to the prophecies of the Bible, we're not going to be involved in a world government. We're not going to be especially the leader of it. The Heritage Foundation article says that the past few days have been among the most painful in over half a century for the United States on the international stage. The fall of Kabul to the Taliban following the U.S. withdrawal of Afghanistan is a humiliation for the United States. It may take decades before America's standing is restored. I don't know if it ever will. And faith in American leadership is fully revived. The fallout from Afghanistan will exceed even that which followed the end of the Vietnam War, not only in terms of the damage to America's self-confidence, but also the threat that it will pose to its security. The Taliban will inevitably turn their country once again into a safe haven for Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups to strike against the U.S. Um, NATO uh, has already been undermined and the retreat from Afghanistan has weakened the alliance and squandered nearly 20 years of collective effort by its 30 members. As Commander-in-Chief, Joe Biden carries ultimate responsibility for a decision that will haunt America for a generation or more. And his legacy will be, according to the Heritage Foundation, one of failure, exceedingly poor judgment, staggering incompetence. And his advisors, including Secretary of State Antony Blinken, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, must also shoulder some of the blame. And... So you can see, I'm, I'm watching this from a big picture scenario here, a prophetic picture, and looking at what the Bible says about the United States and our role in the end time, along with the world government and Europe. And I'll get to Europe in the next segment here. We'll discuss from the Afghanistan perspective. When you, as soon as you say end time, they say, whoa, the end of the world. When's it going to be? And you can see this mask of fear. I'm not telling you this, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you, you live in it right now. Daniel chapter number seven, verse number four. The first beast was like a lion. We have the evil used continually to depict the United States of America. You see it on government. We are at the, the generation for which these people. not miss one segment of understanding the end time because I've had many people tell me it's changed their life forever.
Many of the major prophecies of the Bible are given to us two, three, some of them as high as four or five times. There is not any chance it's not going to happen because it's in your Bible, it's prophesied, and the prophecies always come to pass. So <clears throat> I'm continuing with this Heritage article because you got to hear this. Upon entering office, Biden's team promised to restore America's credibility, right? Following the supposed unpre unpredictability of the Trump years. But instead, they said they now look like a bunch of amateurs and they um, outplayed by the Taliban. I want to make sure you get this. A movement frequently depicted as living in the dark ages. The handling of Afghanistan has been so bad that even Biden's cheerleaders in the left-wing U.S. media, CNN, the Washington Post, they've loudly denounced him. So it's just, it's one of the worst debacles. But unfortunately, the, the Afghanistan debacle is not an aberration for the Biden presidency. It exemplifies the Biden approach. On practically every foreign policy front, the Democratic presidency is driving U.S. decline, Okay. Now, what's the Bible says is going to happen? We're going to diminish off the world stage. We're not going to be part of the world government or actually not, maybe just not in full compliance with it, which is a good thing for us. I'm happy, but I don't want, to, I don't want a position of weakness. Donald Trump was doing it from a position of strength. They had to respect us. That's not what's happening right now. On a visit to London this past week, a writer from the Heritage Foundation met with British officials and MPs and was struck by the tremendous disillusionment expressed with the Biden administration, a sentiment that was shared by many of their counterparts in the European Union, especially in um, Eastern and Central Europe. As one of the senior British, British politicians put it, that Biden makes Barack Obama whose own advisors famously boasted of America leading from behind, looked like a wartime leader, FDR, by comparison. From Biden's disgraceful surrender to Moscow over the, the Nord Stream 2 pipeline to his shameless appeasement of the Iranian regime in his doomed efforts to revive the flawed and failed nuclear deal, this is a president who kowtows to... America's enemies while kicking U.S. allies such as Israel and Poland. Now, I, I, know, I, I don't want to just sit here and rail on Biden, 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 but the thing is, everybody, you've got to understand how this could lead to, the, this could be the ongoing fulfillment of Bible prophecy where the United States would not be part of the, the leader of the world governing body in the end time. We've got to diminish off that stage. So even the special relationship is under threat as the White House puts a, a U.S.-U.K. trade deal on ice while arrogantly lecturing Britain, uh, Brexit Britain over the Northern Ireland Protocol. So the key beneficiaries of Biden's weak-kneed approach have been China and Russia, who are no doubt relishing the disarray in Washington and cheering the sight of U.S. personnel fleeing the, uh, personnel fleeing the Afghan capital. Both Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping of China have grown stronger since Biden entered the Oval Office. They sense an opportunity in his weakness and grow more assertive by the day. We've never been doing this under, a, let's say, a Trump uh, presidency. Biden's presidency has been a monumental disaster at home, too, from its appalling handling of the... You understand, folks, the international community is watching what we're doing. We've, they've looked to us as the leader of this world governing body, the New World Order, for seven plus decades. Now they're watching as an administration is in there totally weak. And from uh, they're watching the appalling handling of our massive border crisis to saddling the American people with trillions of dollars of additional debt that it is, and that it's losing any credibility while undermining American power globally, the Biden-Harris administration, the most left-wing in U.S. history, has presided over a surge of illegal border crossings with more than a million migrants 
entering the United States this year through the southern border with Mexico. The de facto open borders approach of the Biden White House is so extreme that even the most socialist and liberal of European governments would dare not go down the same path. The tragedy in Afghanistan should be, should and is going to be a wake-up call for the American allies. Biden isn't leading the free world. He's actively eroding it. This is how the world's looking at us right now. And it's going to be up to the next president, the Heritage Foundation is surmising, to clean up the mess and restore U.S. leadership on the global stage. I don't know if that will ever happen. But think about this. I wanted to look at this from a big picture scenario, prophetically, how the United States will not be part of a world government in the end time. PJ Media has said, hey, we are perilously close to a post-American world. New York Times even. Supposedly the bought and paid for, you know, on the left, Afghan fiasco raises hard questions for Europe. Once again, the United States has dragged its NATO allies into an embarrassing mess they had warned against bringing calls for more autonomy or their own self-governance, Europe, okay? The Economist magazine on their Charlie Mang page, most of you that follow our ministry, you understand about the Charlie Mang page and the revival of the Holy Roman Empire in Europe. They say why the, why the EU is still wary of America. Supposedly one of our greatest allies on the planet, they're saying, I don't know about the America anymore. CNBC, they, they had published an article, the U.S. and German relations at a crossroads as Afghanistan crisis unfolds. They actually said that Biden's decision to withdraw American troops from Afghanistan and the ensuing rapid takeover of the country by the Taliban has angered many in Europe. Some politicians, including in Germany, see these developments as a problem for the political and moral credibility of Western nations. Karlsten Brzezinski, he's a German economist, he said Germany is now realizing that the Biden administration is clearly, supposedly, EU friendlier and uses a more polite tone, obviously, than Donald Trump, but still keeps the U.S. first and the rest of the world second. The United States sliding off of that world leadership position which I'm happy about, but not in a, um, a, a position of weakness. So let's talk about this power shift to Europe. Holy Roman Empire reborn, the current European Union. Back on November 3rd, 2009, in a monastery, the Lisbon Treaty was signed, right? It was at that time the Holy Roman Empire was reborn. I don't have time to go into all the prophecy today. Maybe I'll do that next week. We'll see. But this Holy Roman Empire or the current European Union is the entity that will be in power at the time. It's over the world government on this earth at the time of the Antichrist, the false prophet, and at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ. It's the European Union, folks, not the United States. The Lisbon Treaty provided that once the Constitution was signed, Europe would have its own permanent president and foreign minister. A few weeks after the signing of the Constitution on November 19th, 2009, Herman van Rompuy of Belgium was chosen as the first European president of, um, of Europe. I think uh, Ursula von der Leyen is the president now. Catherine Ashton of Great Britain was chosen to be the first foreign minister. So the prophecy of the rebirth of the Holy Roman Empire has been fulfilled. It's talked about several times in Scripture. In uh, Revelation 17, there's a picture of this governmental system of this reborn Holy Roman Empire as a beast with seven heads and ten horns. It also shows a woman riding on the back. It's Revelation 17, 3. Woman riding on the back of the beast. The woman is the symbol of the Vatican, and the beast she's riding on is a symbol of the world government. And this is the prophesied union of politics and religion. The ten horns and ten toes in this prophecy symbolize the ten nation union. And out of this ten nation union, the iron mingle with clay, or the, or the Holy Roman Empire, the Antichrist will arise up among three of those kings. So there's a picture outside the uh, parliament building, the European Union Parliament building in Brussels, Belgium, of a, it's a statue of a woman, Europa, riding on the back of a bull. 
This is, a, this is a depiction similar to the woman riding the beast in Revelation 17. The Holy Roman Empire has been reborn. The Antichrist and the false prophet cannot be far behind, and the power base of the Antichrist is now established and awaiting their arrival. So there's an article because of all this mess going on with Afghanistan and different places and the sliding off of the United States, the diminishing of our power on a world stage, Social Europe, a news source, published an article, The European Union and Global Governance, because they see the United States sliding off of the power, the world global governing power and the driver behind this. They've seen this for years. So the, the, the article, the European Union and Global Governance, what's the Bible say is going to happen? Our, the, the United States being the principal driver will diminish. Europe's going to take the reins. The article states, and I'm, I just pulled a few excerpts, the EU's strategic ambition must not be just to carve out a niche for itself among the major powers, but to reshape global governance. Europe looks at themselves as the United States diminishing and they taking over their place at the table as the world's leader. That's exactly what the Bible says is going to happen, everybody. With a conference in February organized by the European Union Institute for Security Studies and the Portuguese presidency, the EU launched a public discussion of the main objectives for its foreign policy and the means of their real, for their realization. The resulting strategic compass is expected to be adopted in the first half of 2022. Just ahead of us now. This year is flying by. We're at the end of August already. It goes on to say, effective political subjects must unite behind a standard as with the United States and the Soviet Union as the end of the First World War when the former set out to build a world safe for democracy while the latter spearheaded this global socialist revolution. If the EU, so the EU is sitting here watching this, if the EU merely sets out to navigate the vast ocean of um, represented by the old post-war international order, this new world order we've been talking about, based on the Westphalian system, it will remain, it will remain under the sway of the other world powers. But given that the balance of power of multipolar systems thus oscillates dangerously between cooperation and conflict with rival powers, mainly the United States, China, and Russia, jockeying for global dominance. Here it is. The EU must carve out a specific role of its own. They want to be the leader as well. That's what the Bible says is going to happen. The UN, therefore, stands at an existential crossroads, life or death. If it wants to weigh in as a world power on an equal footing with the others, it must equip itself with military weapons worthy of a great technological power, including nuclear weapons, accept the ideology of nationalism, in short, becoming a European nation state, the model of a world government, or else, while not giving up on the idea of having its own military force in line with its principle of strategic autonomy, self-governance, it must strive to play a unifying role in the construction of a peaceful international order. Folks, you understand the scenario here. The United States, the international community is seeing us as, a, a, um, as with a, a, a presence of weakness, a position of weakness on the world stage, while the EU is saying, hey, we're setting things in place so we can have our seat at the table, and if the United States creates a vacuum, we are going to step up and take our place as the leader of the world governing body. This is exactly what the Bible says is going to happen. We're watching Bible prophecy play out right before our very eyes. Folks, the second coming of Jesus is not far ahead. Make sure you're ready to meet him when he comes back.